Hi everyone, welcome to our small holding adventure. My name's Tracy and this is Stephen and today we're going to take you through our experience of raising pigs this year from start to finish. Hope you enjoy the video. These guys are with us for another six days and then they're off to the butchers and we'll be showing you exactly what we do with um, with what we get back. We're having one last trip down to see the pigs before they get picked up um, in a couple of hours. So these are our two Gloucestershire Old Spot Crosses that have been with us all the way throughout the summer. We got them April the 4th. It's now um, early October, October the, October the 4th actually. We've had some horrendous weather here. It's not stopped raining. So the poor things have been swimming, it feels like. So we've brought them down a couple of courgettes to see if they fancy them. They're homegrown. You better appreciate them. Like courgettes. <laughs> Doesn't like homegrown courgettes. So we're just going to check on them. How are they looking? Big. Good. Do you want to take a guesstimate at um, live and dead weight? Uh, dead weight, I'd say this one will be about 110 and this one about 17. <laughs> <laughs> They've certainly done the job that we expected them to on this ground, so all of this was pretty much the same as this. So we're turning this into a growing patch next year. So they'll have manured it for us, turned it over, hopefully killed off all the nettles and things that are there. This, all this water will um, disappear shortly. As I say, it's just because of the amount of rain that we've had. So we'll take down their pig shelter, remove all of the fencing there so that it goes back to normal fencing and we'll get this planted up next year. We're just chatting about how we feel um, about them going. Kind of, it's a really bittersweet feeling. Um, these guys have been with us, as we say, since April um, and we've looked after them every day. They've given us no, no hard times whatsoever. They've been fantastic to raise, an absolute brilliant breed of pigs, great temperament. Um, couldn't have asked for anything better really for our second time raising pigs on our, on our small holding. So um, it is a bit of a sad, a sad moment, I guess, for both of us. But, um, but equally, we're looking forward to to what we'll get back in about a week's time from the butchers. Um, so Stephen will be processing it um, himself. So we'll do a video on that or it'll be joined onto this video. Um, but yeah, a bit of a bittersweet feeling. Here you go, they need something better than the cord here. Yeah. An apple. <laughs> Trying to cause as least stress as possible, getting the trailer as close as we can. As close as we can. 
to where the pigs can get out. That's, in the That's them off. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> that was not fun. So we're just going to tie this gate back up. Open the gate up. The, the pigs have never been in a trailer before and we think there must be about 95, 100 kilos at least. Um, and they did not want to go in one little bit. So um, with a Harris fencing, some pallets, the gate off the field, dad's welly, dad's welly and some encouragement shall we say with the finally got in it, it probably didn't take that long but it felt like it took absolutely forever i mean hopefully it's as least stress possible to them but to be honest it was stressful for everybody so they're off on the trailer now they'll be going in um we'll get them back in a, a few days and we'll update you as to how all that goes so thank god that's over So that's it, the pigs have up and left. They've been to the abattoir, it's five days later and we're gonna show you how we process them and how much meat we actually get off them. Right, so this is the last half of our two pigs that we're going to get on with now. So we thought we'd video as much as we could just to give you a quick insight of how it goes. So this is the shoulder of pork. We're just going to get three nice sized joints out of this for the Sunday roast. And the rest is purely going into sausage meat, mince and diced. Okay, so we just start by taking off the trotter off the shoulder here. We keep that there for bones, that'll go into bone broth later on. Then we just cut off the shin meat, taking it away from the, the skin and keeping all that for sausage meat. Then we just take off the top of the ribs, cutting through the cartilage, that just cuts off, no need to saw it. Then turn it round and we're going to take the ribs out. These ribs won't go in as ribs these will just go in for bones for bone broth we only keep the ribs off the the bellies so these will just go in with all the rest of the bones for broth so just using the tip of your knife staying as close to the bone as you can leaving as much meat as you can on the the shoulder itself just ease it round the bones and eventually you'll get to the bottom and just slice it away trim off any excess that you've left on the bones I'll just go into sausage meat as well. Then we just trim away any bloody meat that's up near the neck area. That's just discard of that. And then we start to take the uh, shoulder blade out. So there's a little mark there where there's a red like vein blood spot. We just go in there, you'll find the, the joint of the shoulder. You split through that and just run your knife down the side of the shoulder blade across the top of the shoulder blade as close as you can to the bone all the time just trim the bit of meat off the bottom of the bone there and then all you do now is just cut a tiny little bit around the top of the bone no need to start trimming around the bone put two fingers under lean on the meat with one hand pull with the other and it should just come clean away from the meat and then just trim around the bottom edge and you should have a nice cleanish bone just trim any excess fat off any excess glands out and then we just cut off the the rack side of shoulder there and this is what we'll get our Sunday joints from now we're just going to score the meat using a plain old Stanley knife, keeping the score lines quite close together so it crackles up nicely when it goes in the oven. Don't need to score too deep, don't go into the meat, just through the skin and the fat. And then we'll start stringing it up. Now depending on how big you want your joints, we're going to get three joints out of this 
so the strings want to be quite close together so it holds it all nice and tight when we cut it into three joints. These are just standard butcher's knots I'm using here. This is uh, how I got taught to tie eight years ago and it's just stuck with me. I'm sure every butcher's got his own way of tying knots, but this is just the way I do them. So if anyone's interested in learning how to do them or learning how to do the butchery of any kind, please leave a comment and I'm sure we'll be able to do a more in-depth video of anything if anyone's got any queries. So we're just going to put one more string on now and that'll be it for this joint. So like I say, we're going to get three joints out of this. So that should be enough strings for that. We're just going to tidy it up in a minute. Right, trimming the, this is the neck end. So you want to trim that up, make it nice and square. And there's always a gland in this, which you don't want in your meat, which is just there. So you just cut that out, discard of that. The rest of the meat will go into sausage. That will go in the bin. Square the other end up, just make it nice and neat. Get more sausage out of that. And then we just cut it in and three nice size, family of four Sunday roast joints. There we go, beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to deal with the hand side of the shoulder. So off this, all we're going to get is mince, diced and sausage meat. So there's no set way to butcher this, bone it out, do it however you like, as long as you get as much usable meat off it as you can. So I'm just going to start by trimming the excess fat off. Not just keeping purely fat, because we want meat in our sausage. Our sausages are probably 75 to 85% meat. So we don't just want to trim all the fat off and keep for sausage. We want to have a nice balance. So we're just going to take the bone out, keep that for broth, and then basically just trim what's left up for mince, dice, and sausage. Now we get onto the the hind quarter of the pork, which is the the loin, the belly, and the leg. So we're just going to take the fillet out first, or the tenderloin. Just start by running the knife down the inside of the pork loin, as close to the bone as possible, round the top end under the chump of the leg, and then just pull the tenderloin away from the fat. So we just trim the end of that off. And then we're left with a nice pork fillet. So all we're going to do now is separate the leg from the middle. The middle is the uh, belly and loin joined. So, like I say, there's all sorts of ways to do this. This is my way. I cut it the second bone in and leaving the chump on the leg. I'll show you what we do with that later. So, just saw through the bone, not through the meat. Cut it with a knife, taking the leg away from the middle. So, we'll start off with the middle. So, we just trim out that bit of meat at the top of the flare fat. Then we just nick the top of the flare fat, put your two fingers under, give it a good yank and the flare fat will come out nice and clean. We keep that, we'll render that down. Then we just get the saw, 
just cutting through the bones, not cutting through the meat. Pick however long or short you want your ribs and then just saw through the bones, like I say, not cutting through the meat. And then just slice your belly away from your loin. And there you have a nice big meaty loin of pork. This is the loin of our biggest pig and it was also our leanest pig. So off the littlest pig we did chops and off this pig we're doing back bacon. So this loin is destined for back bacon. So we're going to do rindless back bacon. So we're just going to take a thin layer of the skin off the back of the loin which will take the back fat off it and render that down and the skin will roll up, cut in a little rolls and roast that up for little dough treats. So just staying nice and close to the skin, not going into the meat and just cut that away. Then we're just gonna sheet these ribs out of the loin so with the tip of your knife again always using the tip of your knife just nice and close to the bone following the bone down all the time trying not to cut into the meat if you can just get it as close to that bone as you can and then just go all the way along the full length of the bone flip the line over go down the backbone and just pop that bone away. Then we just have a look at it, tidy up any excess thick bits of fat off it, and then it's ready to be put down for bacon. But we just wanted to show you what the uh, our loins are like, so I'm just gonna cut it in half, cut a couple of chops of it, show you what the chops are like. We got off our other one, and then the rest of this, I'll just go into bacon. So just trim it up to the size you want. A bit more sausage meat for sausage. And then I'll just cut a couple of chops off it just to show you what the chops are like. Look at that. Beautiful pork. So a couple of nice thick chops. And the rest will go down in the salt for back bacon. Right now onto the belly pork. So we just cut the tail end off. That'll just go into sausage. Trim down the side where the nipples are. Then we'll skin that off. That'll go into sausage. Now we're just gonna sheet rib these bones out. This is what we have as a rack of ribs. Just keeping again, as close to the bone, not slashing the meat. Just cut them ribs out. Then just cut the rough end off the ribs through the cartilage. And there's a nice long rack of ribs. Then we're gonna put the thick end of this into streaky bacon. That'll go down into streaky bacon. And I'm just gonna score the other end of it, the thin end. Get a couple of small uh, belly pork joints out of it. For a couple of little roasts. So we're just gonna cut that in half. The thick end of that, look at that, perfect streaky bacon. That's gonna go down into salt with the loins, and that's gonna go into streaky bacon. Just cut that in half, and there's your two nice little belly pork joints. Right, so now onto the leg. I'm gonna cut behind the kneecap, saw through the bone, cutting the trotter off. That'll go in with the rest of the bones. And then we're gonna cut a nice big shank off there, which we're gonna put down into a, a brine solution, which will turn into a nice big meaty ham shank. So turn the leg round to get to the tailbone. I'm just gonna cut down the side of the tailbone using the tip of the knife under the seam, and then just pop it, and then just cut around the tailbone, and that'll just come out like that. Trimming a little bit of excess meat off it for sausage. 
the bone down in for broth. Then we take the isle meat out of the isle bone. And then we just work our way around the isle bone, take off that rough bit of dark meat at the top of it. And just using the tip of your knife, just work your way around the isle bone, just feeling the, the bone with the tip of the knife. And then break the joint of the femur bone. And then just using the tip of your knife again, just running it around the bone. So clean up the bone, some bit more sausage meat, a bit more mince. And then we'll get onto the chump, where we leave the chump on. So this is where I take the chump off for, we like the pork leg steak. So we cut the chump off and then we'll skin that off and we'll get about four steaks out of that and the rest will just go into mince and sausage. So there's a lot of things you can do with the leg. You can have a Christmas ham, you can just have roasting joints, but all we're gonna do is turn our legs into ham joints, put them down in the brine solution, turn them into ham joints, mince and diced, because that's what we use most of as a family. So that's what we're gonna do with them. We did a lot of joints last time off our other pigs and we just didn't get the benefit out of them. So this is what we decided to do with these ones. So it's going to take the top side off there. That'll get skinned off and go into a ham joint. Then we're just going to go around the femur bone. Pulling that away, taking that out. Now we just find the seam for the thick flank. We'll take that off. Just always run down the seam, keeping close to the skin, not going into the meat. And then that will just get trimmed up and become another ham joint when it goes down into the brine solution. And the rest of this leg, we'll probably get half of it will be ham joints. And the other half, we'll just go to mince and dice. Right, so we've just got back from processing our pigs. And this is what we got out of two pigs. Got 83 packs of nine sausages, all six different flavors. We got 15 packs of burgers. Again, different flavors. We just made the burgers out of what was left in the sausage machine. We got 14 packs of sausage meat to make sausage rolls and patties and stuff with. We got 22 packs of pork chops, nice thick pork chops. Four belly pork joints, nice belly pork joints. Six one and a half kilo shoulder joints. Four packs of pork ribs. Eight leg steaks, four pork fillets, tenderloins, 20 packets of one pound packets of diced pork, 31 one pound packets of minced pork. Then we've got three ham shanks to go into cure, big nice ham shanks and how many of them? 15 ham joints to go into the cure. We've got two full loins left to go into bacon for back bacon. Three whole bellies left to go into, ba to go into salt for streaky bacon. So what we've got left over here is just bits and pieces of what we're gonna have for tea tonight to sample everything. We also got a couple of bags of skin, which we're gonna make dog treats out of and roll them up tight, put them in the oven and they'll become dog treats. We've got a big bag of oh, back fat, which Tracy's gonna render down into lard. So no need for uh, vegetable oil. A bag of flare fat, 
I don't know what she's going to do with that, but <laughs> she wanted to keep same, it anyway. The same. And yeah, and in here we've got our brines, one salt brine, just pure salt. That's going to, we're going to put some hams in there and probably the the ham hocks, they're going to go in that one. And we've got a sweeter brine that we're going to put some of the ham joints in just to test the two. And we also brought back a bucket full of trotters and bones for bone broth and soups. So yeah, that's our full haul of two pigs and the bacon to come back in seven days. We're so proud of how much meat we've managed to get from our two pigs. This will last us at least a year. If you have any questions that you'd like us to address, please leave your comments below and we'll get back to you on those. Also, if you like what you're seeing and would like to see more of this, then please let us know that too. And subscribe to our channel for more videos on everything that's happening on our small holding. Stay safe, guys.